What's up, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of Casters of Horror. I'm Chris Mass. I'm Shane, and this week we are going to try to talk about the Outwaters. <laughs> this is this one's going to be interesting because um, yeah. this is a a visual movie. This is an ex- uh, this is an ex- <laughs> this is an experience. <laughs> this is an experience and a half. But before we get into that, uh, this week we've got a little bit of movie news. Movie news. Shane's voice is back. I can see this week. Yeah, he he basically uh, he wrote me some notes this week and was like, "Hey, I can just take the whole show." And I was like, "Oh, okay." He's <laughs> <laughs> feeling better, I guess. I've got this, and I've got I, this. I got this, and blah blah blah. But uh, I also still out, have a, a bit of a cough, so I apologize in advance if uh, one slips out. That's that's fine. <laughs> I I have I have gas, so I apologize in advance in case one slips out. All but, right. Uh, yeah. Speaking of movie news, uh, and you taking the show. You have the movie news for today. and Go ahead. I do have some movie news today. So, uh, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi, uh, according to Bruce Campbell, uh, says that he and and Sam Raimi are actively pursuing the idea of continuing the Evil Dead franchise with an animated series. I could watch that. Yeah. We we don't know much about it. Of course, um, Bruce Campbell has retired from the the acting role of, on on screen of, of Ash um, okay. saying that he's getting too old, you know, for all that jumping oh. around and all that nonsense. But oh, I was going to say vanity sake. <laughs> yeah. But he would very much still like to voice the character. So yeah. Um, uh, no really details at the moment, as far as, you know, release or even what it would cover, just that it is um, being actively pursued by the two of them. I, so. I would watch that. Absolutely, I, really I would, would too. I could see it. Do you remember uh, Kevin Smith did uh, the Clerks animated series a while oh, back? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if if they had that same sort of animation style mm-hmm. with that, I think it'd be brilliant. Yeah, I that is still great. that Clerks one still has my absolute favorite beginning and ending of an episode. Yes. Previous yeah. or uh, on the it was the first like episode. previously on Clerks. Yeah, yeah, it was the very very first episode. Previously on Clerks, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like a blank screen. And then the ending of it, it's <laughs> like next week on Clerks. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Ah, that guy's a genius. Yeah, but, but anyway, anyway um, cool. Speaking of Evil Dead, oh man, Bruce Campbell may have retired from the on screen acting, but. Sam Raimi says he would still very much like to do another sequel starring Bruce Campbell, uh, saying, I'd really like to direct a new uh, Evil Dead movie, but I'd really like to do it with Bruce. He says he's retired the character. I hope not. Huh. So, I don't know, man. To see if... uh... If he does so. I know that Bruce Campbell has said he's done, but come on, him and Sam Raimi are like best friends. Yeah. You know, I, I, think I think Sam that could that probably be, talk him into it. Yeah. yeah. And we might we might see that here in the future. Yep. I'd be uh, I'd I yeah, I'd be excited for that. Oh yeah. Did you absolutely. did you ever watch any of the Ash versus the Evil Dead series? No, I still have not seen that and I haven't seen the it. um that like reboot remake movie that they did. Um the more recent one. You mean just Evil Dead? Yeah. Uh, where um uh, what's her name plays the dude? See, I really liked that one. Yeah, a lot of I've, people, I've heard it's really good. A lot of people hate it, but <laughs> I think, but I think it's yeah. because they're just like I'm fanboy, you know, and all yeah. that stuff. But I I really liked it. I yeah. liked it a lot. So um, yeah, you need to watch that. Yeah, I do. It's, I need to. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of what, Sam Raimi, what, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Yes, I have all Sam Raimi news. Oh, and this okay. one just, uh, I, I don't know if anything's ever going to come with it. I just, uh, or come of it. I just thought it was funny. He, <clears throat> Sam Raimi has said that Drag Me to Hell 2 is actually a possibility. Really? Yeah. He, of course, the that movie ends in such a way that it seems like it's pretty definitive and he never saw a reason for a sequel. Yeah. Um, but he says that the team at Ghost House Pictures are trying to come up with a story that would work. 
Hmm. Uh, and he's anxious to hear if they do it. So, again, not something that's in active development. May never, you know, may never happen. But yeah, just yeah. The fact that he says that somebody is actually trying to come up with a story. I don't know. That'd be interesting. That'd be interesting to see. That, well, that uh, would be very, very interesting. That was uh, the first Justin Long horror film that I saw. Oh, really? And okay. I think it might have. Was that actually his first horror film? Now that I'm I don't, I don't know it. if it was his first or not. Uh, I think it's the first one I ever saw him in. Yeah. yeah because I was like, one. Justin Long in a horror film? But yeah. Then, yeah. You know, it worked. I need, to, I need to watch that one again. It's been a long time since I've seen that film. Yeah. So. That's one of those that like ultimately I liked. It, it has some kind of like zany, yeah. absolutely Sam Raimi well, it's, yeah, it's Sam goofiness Raimi. in it. But yeah. But yeah. yeah. Right that's on, it. Man. That's all I had. Right on. Well, that's it for this week's movie news. Movie news. So, uh, uh, oh, I did have one little last tidbit. Uh, supposedly, oh. uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh, <coughs> Blood and Honey, uh, did so well on its first. They did a one night running of it at uh, some select movie theaters and did so well, in fact, that they are bringing it back to theaters. So uh, check your hmm. local listings to see if that's going to be coming anywhere near you. I guess Good it's like four million in its first night or something like that. Yeah, four million. Yeah, I've heard it was quite the uh, quite the the intake. I've yeah. heard terrible things about the movie, but you know, I, so what? Who knows? Independent who knows? film. I more haven't power seen to it them. yet. I have I have not watched it myself, but anyway. Yeah. So now that's it for this week's movie right. news. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we might as well just jump on into this film. Yep. Uh, but before we do, make sure you guys uh, jump down below. Before we jump in, jump below. Make sure you guys hit like and subscribe while you're here. And uh, if you guys got to check out the uh winnie the pooh movie in the theaters let us know or if it's yeah. playing near you or if you know of somewhere where it's playing uh go ahead and drop that in the comments below and maybe somebody who's watching this might want to go check it out so anyway uh let's get on into this film sir uh like we do every week we uh we we try we try to uh go scene by scene yeah. so this is a full spoiler review of this film if you have not watched it yet um, what are you doing? Yeah. And why are you here? Um, and, to, and yeah, this is going to be a full spoiler review, but I, to the best of our ability, yeah. I, I don't know that it's actually possible to spoil this film. Yeah, uh, no, I, I mean, <laughs> even if even if you hear our words, um, good luck putting them together. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, this film was written and directed by Robbie Banfitch. Uh, he also edited it, um, did the sound design, um, producer, casting, producer. Uh, he, I think he did craft services. Um, <laughs> he was best boy. Um, uh, what else did he do? Uh, pretty much everything for this film. This, uh, this also it seems like a because uh, because I was on IMDb a little bit. This seems like a like a friend group film. Oh yeah, yeah, because they've all worked together before. Um, yeah. did a couple short films together. In fact, all of them. That's all that they've done. Uh, I think I think one of them or two of them had a very very small role yeah. in another film. Yeah, but for the most part, all they've done is short films, and I think they've done them together. So. Yeah. Uh, it starts out, uh, with a 911 call. We hear 911, you know, what's your emergency? And then we just, hear, ah, ah, there's a woman screaming and they're like, ma'am, 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 you know, type thing. Uh, <laughs> and then up on screen, we get this thing that pops up and it just, it's like black and it just says words basically. Yeah. Um, and it says Michelle August, age 28, last scene, 8, 8, 2017. And then it shows a photo. Uh, Michelle August is played by Michelle May. Like I said, she's done a bunch of short films, uh, mainly with this group. Yeah. Uh, then we hear the operator again, like, hello. And we're just. Ah, 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 ah. There is a lot of screaming in the background. Yeah. And it sounds like a lot of people screaming, not just. Yeah. Four people. <laughs> Yeah, and at one point it's it starts out where it's like you hear one and then you hear more 
yeah. then you hear like less and then you hear more and then it's like it's just yeah. all over the place and there's a there's like some talking you know something there's words being said yeah. you can't make any of it out like mumbling and all this yeah. Sort of, yeah yeah you have no idea you hear a guy every once in a while and then you hear women it just yeah uh then it goes black again we see angela bakuzi age 31 last seen 8 8 2017 we see her photo uh, it's played by uh, Angela Basoli or Basolis. I don't. I think it's Basoli. Um, again, part of this friend group short films. Uh, then we get the phone operator again. She's like, "Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me?" And there's just more screaming. Ah! Uh, the screen goes black again. Scott Zagorak or Zagorak, uh, age thirty six. Last scene eight eight twenty seventeen. We see his photo. Uh, he's played by Scott Sh- uh, Chamel. Uh, again, part of the same friend group. Yep. Uh, and then we hear screaming again, and then you hear the phone operator go, "Oh my goodness, ma'am!" <laughs> you know, and, it's like, yeah. and then it goes black again because you're hearing like, wah, 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 you know, all at the same time, and that's yeah. when she's like, "Oh my goodness!" Uh, and then it says Robbie Zagorak, age thirty-two, last seen eight eight twenty seventeen. We see the photo of him. And this is played by writer and director Robbie Van Fitch. Yeah. Uh, then we hear again, can you hear me from the phone operator? Hello, if you can hear me, I need you to talk to me. I need to know what's going on. And then we see <laughs> the outwaters. No sound, just outwaters. You know, big title screen. We hear someone say, do you see it? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you hear the phone operator say, can you hear me, man? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, do you see it? And then you hear this Aah! type sound, like this <laughs> screeching. Uh, and then it just goes black. Yeah. And then we get another title card that says, Evidence, Mojave County Police Department. Camera slash memory cards. Date of discovery, 2-22-22. Okay. Now, mind you, these are the memory cards. Okay. Yeah. For internal review, memory cards, one through three, raw video and sound. Meaning that these are the the only thing that you will see or hear were caught on these memory cards. Mm -hmm. Remember this. Yes. Yeah, I I agree. This is important. Because there are many soapboxes that I climb (laughs) upon. Uh, it says chronological assembly. So somebody's gone through and taken these memory cards, put them in order. Okay, so we will we'll see them. We get the title come up. Card one. By the way, that whole thing about it being assembled in chronological order. First of all, I, I don't know how they supposedly did that, but. Card um, one, two, and then three. Well, <laughs> but, well yeah, yeah I, that could be what it's referring to. Um, I also think that is important for the film. Yes. Um, which we'll get into, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane and I have not talked about this film whatsoever. No. In fact, generally, when we are when we are doing these reviews, this is the first time he and I have spoken of whatever film we've just yeah. watched. Um, so yeah, this is our first back and forth conversation on this. You guys get in on it live. Um, now we see card one, just black screen card one. And now, mind you, during all of this, there's no sound. It's just like slides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm like, okay, we're seeing a slideshow of this, but all right. Uh, so now we're in the found footage. Robbie's giving his brother Scott a birthday gift. It's a backpack, with a bandana on it. Don't know the significance of the bandana, but there's a bandana on it. It's a dad's bandana, he says. Oh, is that what he said it was? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's dad's, dad's bandana. Oh, okay. Uh, and then he gives him a journal for his short story ideas. Uh, then a gift from mom. Puka shell necklace. Okay. And, okay. and, uh, and Scott's like, oh, man, then... He's like, oh, you got to act excited. Do it again so I can show this to mom. And he's like, oh, wow. And, he's good. and then they're like, oh, my word, I can't show her any of this. Uh, <laughs> and then they're having drinks to celebrate. There's just random shots of like 
things and stuff. Then we get this earthquake. You're like, Lots oh, of you're... random shots throughout yeah. this film. There's going to be a lot um, of that. Then we cut to Michelle singing. Uh, and I guess they're recording music. Uh, she's yeah. a musician. Uh, Robbie is playing the guitar at this point. Um, she's singing. Uh, we find out through a series of shots that they're going to film a music video out in the desert. Yeah, uh, they're then listening to the playback of her singing, which I put in here as someone who is a trained recording engineer. Uh, way too much auto tune. She oh, really? sounds robotic for uh, a folk singer. I mean, yeah. way too much auto tune. I mean, her voice. Uh, and then Robbie says, oh, you sound just like your mom. And I was like, obviously, her mom's a robot. <laughs> yeah. Because also at this point, right? I, I'm watching, right? This movie's streaming, right? So I so I'm watching it and I'm like, oh man, I've got a dead pixel. Oh um, yeah. yeah. I'm like, that sucks. This this monitor you know, is fairly new. Yeah. And then the, the the scene cuts and it's like, wait, no, okay. Oh wait, there's more dead pixels. What the f-? Yeah. So no. It's, it's just some filming. Yeah, it's the camera. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, there's way too much auto-tune to in this thing. It sounds like um, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, and T-Pain, uh, if, they were, <laughs> if they were a band together back in the 70s. Um, next, we see him flying on an airplane, and then Robbie's sneaking up to the uh, door of an apartment, and Angela answers the door, and she's like, ah, she starts crying. And there's hugs, and then they're driving in a car. And then there's a birthday party for Robbie's mom. And then they're flying again and <laughs> somebody's humming. And then he's on a FaceTime call with Angela. He's like, you need to come out for the video shoot. And she's like, okay. And so then yeah, seriously, this is the out. point where I have in my notes. There are a lot of jump cuts in this movie. <laughs> there's a ton of jump cuts. Yeah. Um, and then we got the two brothers talking. And then Scott's like, I had a dream about dad the other night. And then we get footage of Michelle prepping for <laughs> for the music video shoot and then dancing. And then there's glass breaking. And then there's another earthquake and then aftershocks. And then there's a storm. And then he's like, "Ugh, Los Angeles. And then yeah. we get a phone call from the mom. But see, to me, <laughs> this was. I already had developed like the sense of foreboding right here, right? Because we've had two earthquakes, aftershocks, yeah. yeah, a bad storm rolling in, yeah, and all I could think was, they're not supposed to go out to the desert. <laughs> and you see know, me, like, I'm just writing everything down because I'm going, I don't know what's relevant, yeah, at this yeah. point. So you're gonna get a lot of just rambling there's gonna yeah. be a lot of words put in um no specific order yeah um it, it's it hard might sound and, like i'm having a stroke and see and, and the other thing too is there's there's points throughout this movie like even in, in these opening sections here where there are noises in the background and it's not really clear what they are it's just like they maybe this like this weird droning sound that kind of escalates like, but it's not mm, yeah but it's like it's not part of like music you no. know for the film right you know but yep. i noticed it a lot of times even leading leading up to you know them going out into the desert there's a lot of weird places where there's just some weird sounds going on yeah that nobody else notices yeah yeah and if, if this is all caught on film or on these memory cards. Not on film. And I will get into that later, too. Yeah. This is caught on a memory card. Digital yeah. memory card. And nobody else is noticing it. Yeah. Well, I actually do think it's very briefly glossed over. I think Angela has noticed. Even, even if we don't specifically say, like, she noticed these sounds or something. Uh, she kind of mentioned something later that I think maybe she has picked up on some weird stuff going on. 
okay. around them, but you're going to have to stop me many times throughout this. And if well, there's see, something that I gloss over, but that's and you're the, like, like, oh, I, here's this thing. And I'm like, oh, OK, I didn't catch that. So but like, I don't have any specific things written down. Well, I think I may have a few times where like, oh, there's some weird sounds, but yeah. there, it happens. It actually happens a lot throughout this film. And, and I'm pretty sure it's intentional. It's not just like, you know, they goofed and something got left in or it was just, you know. There, there's a lot of weird sounds, and to me, it's just a lot where too many people are just ignoring them for yeah. it to be. Yeah, and there is stuff that's played up for our tense, you know, our intensity, mm-hmm. I believe. And I'm like, that. Why is that on this? But uh, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, they're headed to the. Oh, oh, okay. So Angela's now in LA. Woo, Angela, party time. Woo. Yeah. Uh, they're partying at his apartment, drinking all this. She has her head in the freezer for a while because she's like, it's so hot. She's from New Jersey. I guess they're originally from New Jersey, all these guys. She's a childhood friend or sister or. Or friend ex lover I don't yeah. know <laughs> uh then next they're headed to the desert all four of them they're driving out there cuz cuz Scott's supposed to take them out there and Scott barely talks yeah Scott's just like mm, throughout the whole <laughs> film at it's some like point lurch. like b- before they leave the desert you hear one of them say do you have the coke and i'm not convinced they were talking about cola <laughs> i don't I know that that's that yeah okay we're watching the same movie. I know. Um, anyway, uh, they are now headed to the desert, driving out there. Uh, they're stopping for like views every once in a while, like at the side of the road mm-hmm. and all that. Uh, getting out, just looking, you know, scenic shots and stuff like this. Um, then there's like, like there's one part where Michelle's like stacking rocks. She's like making a little rock stack like stack thing yeah tower um and it's, they're like what are you doing thing, and she's like I'm, uh, I'm making this while they're driving there's this one scene where um is, is it scott that's dri- yeah scott's driving yeah right? scott's driving scott he like he's he leans forward and he's like what the like like he noticed something and this is one of those points where you hear this really bizarre, like buzzing or like droning sound. Yeah, but then it just cuts away. Cuts yeah, to it just scene. cuts away. There, there's nothing. Yeah. yeah, there's there's no explanation for it. Yeah. Uh, then they're cave exploring. They're like going through some cave, and they're like, "Wow, oh, look at the cave!" Um, and I'm sure there were noises in that too. Um, then we get this obligatory up di- upside know, down right? shot. Yeah. And I'm just like, this has become a thing now. Yep. I know. I noted it too. And I'm just like, wow, this is going on for a long time. Yeah. Uh, then they're at a lake. Uh, we see Michelle's ass <laughs> in a bikini. And then Robbie playing with a leaf. And then he's filming the sun's reflection on the water. And he keeps going. saying, I don't want to leave. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. leave. Yeah. And he's just kind of mumbling it to himself. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know what he's talking about. And then it just goes black and it says card two. So I was like, he filled up one memory card. Here we go. Card yeah. number two. Uh, they're at a, like the side of the road pit stop type thing. And they, and they finally make it to the desert and donkeys. Donkeys. Yeah. Five donkeys. And they're just there. Yeah. And they're like, look at the donkeys. And then they go hiking to the shoot location and then yeah. the campsite. And these donkeys pop up throughout this film. Just they do. At several different times. More um, weird sounds. This is probably another point. I don't know if you noticed it. Another weird buzzing sound you know, that and we they're, get. They're now getting ready to go into the desert area. Yeah. So we're hearing this. They're, they got the donkeys and you're hearing them. And then it's like type sound. Yeah. It's just like it, it almost it's so hard. It was hard to tell because at one point it actually kind of sounded like an old uh, like an engine from like a prop plane or something. Yeah. But but it, it was it's really hard to tell. Or like a lawnmower way off in the distance. 
a very big loud lawnmower then i don't know <laughs> industrial lawnmower yeah um so they get to the their base camp basically where they're going to set up uh they start kind of hiking around looking at stuff and all this and then robbie's like hey i'm going to i'm going to go check out the dry lake bed basically where they're going to film mm-hmm. the music video uh, the rest of them are going off somewhere else. Um, he starts looking around at like a little shrub, bush, dried, whatever thing. Yeah. Uh, and then they start shooting some pictures or video for the photo shoot. And then Robbie's like, wow, Michelle, you look just like your mom. And I'm like, what does this dude have with I his, know. his mom? You sound like your mom. You look yeah, like you your mom. Like your mom. You, you, look, you, you sound like, and you look like your mom. You kiss like your mom. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, I really miss her. And then she like gives him a big hug. And then she's like, almost like she's crying. Yeah. And then we see like an ax stuck in the ground. This is, I'm not having a stroke, people. This is literally me trying to describe what's going on in this. And so, so before that even happens, they're, Mm -hmm. they're walking, they're like walking in a line through the, uh, the desert, getting to this place they're going. Yeah. And and Robbie, who is filming. Yeah. Um, he, he kind of, the, the other three kind of move ahead of him a little bit and he ends up turning and focusing on, there's this figure in the distance oh yeah and it looks like it looks like it's wearing like a red dress or something or some sort of weird red suit it's very blurry and it's it's red but it's clearly a person walking yeah yeah because at that point you're like oh is it like a um almost like a mirage or is he or is he actually seeing a person yeah yeah um yeah, so they're they're walking along. They've got like parasols and stuff. Yeah, to keep this, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The girls have the parasols. Yeah, those. Yeah, like yeah. clear. It's they're cool. They're actually kind of neat yeah. looking. <laughs> um, so uh, next we're seeing Robbie. He's getting like nature sounds at night. He's got like this this microphone, like a parabolic microphone, and mm. it's got like a a cat, a dead cat, basically on it, and he's like holding <laughs> it up and. And uh, that's what actually what they call those things. Oh, okay. like fuzzy, yeah, because it's supposed to keep huh. the wind from hitting it and all that sort of stuff. But it's supposed to deaden the wind. So, yeah, and it looks uh, like a cat. So they call it a dead cat. Huh. Uh, anyway, so he has it and he's like getting sounds of the, you know, you can hear like, you know, coyotes yeah. in the background. And, yeah, you and sound owls. like you're hearing like hundreds of coyotes. Yeah. And- owls and, and maybe something like some really loud like screeching sounds yeah. you know there's there's obviously a lot of critters out here in the desert yeah 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 and these microphones are sensitive um, oh, yeah. so next we're in the tent uh girls are in a tent the two brothers are in a tent um and then we hear like these loud explosions yeah um they sound kind of like like cannons, I thought. Yeah, like it mortar, like, cannons like a, yeah, like like you would see like on on the news or whatever when they're like shooting off like mortars on on war films and stuff like that. Yeah. It sounds kind of like that, you know. And yeah. So it sounds like they're in the middle of a battle or something. Yeah. And there and, are some like um, they're not. I don't want to say mountains, but they're you know hills. Yeah, they're you know, it's rock. You know, and so they they even mention how like the sounds are it's like reverberating off the yeah. off the um the, yeah the so it there. can it can it can make it sound bigger than it is yeah all that sort of stuff and like, it does like some of it sounds like thunder yeah like, rolling thunder but some of it really sounds like cannon shells being fired yeah. or something and it, and at some points it's even like drums it almost yeah. sounds like so it's yeah. like. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Scott's like, I'm going to see what's going on. So he starts like unzipping the tent and Robbie's like, go out, you go out. <laughs> yeah. Like Robbie's just going to stay behind. And then, so they all end up going out and then the girls come out of the tent and then the explosion thing sound again. Um, then they're like, Oh, it sounds like thunder. 
And yeah. then it, it just keeps going. And then you hear the coyotes like freaking out. But nobody can see anything. There's no flashes of light. There's no nothing yeah. at this point. And then we hear this really, really loud thunderclap. Just like. Yeah. And then uh, Robbie looks up and then we see the strobing light coming from somewhere. It's like this orb. Mm -hmm. But it's just like strobing. Pulsating almost. Yeah. And that's the only other than like some light from like their phones or the camera or whatever. Yeah. It's because otherwise it's the middle of the desert. It is pitch black. Out yeah. There. Um, which is weird because you would think with like a full moon or, you know, like the moonlight being out there, you would see more. Mm -hmm. But. But we don't really get any shots of moon or stars or anything. Well, there's there's a shot where we see the full moon and then we see oh yeah light, yeah like right next to it and it's yeah like, there, yeah there is a moon shot yeah and so I mean and uh, yeah that comes into play a little bit later too yeah um so then it's the next morning Robbie says he felt like there was like a deep earthquake in the night during the middle of the night yeah. And uh, this is the point where Angela is like, it's weird out here. There's something weird yeah, happening I all go around home. us. I don't want to yeah. be out here and all that. And they start arguing back and forth, her and Robbie. And yeah. then we see the donkeys again. Yeah. And then Scott's writing in his journal. And then then he yells to Robbie's like, hey, Scott, can you try to calm Angela down? And then Scott's like, okay. I mean, he doesn't say anything. He just gives it like yeah. a thumbs up type thing. It, it, literally, the dude doesn't talk. Yeah. Time. I think it's so they didn't have to pay him. They're like, look, <laughs> it's not a talking role. We're not going to pay you. You're going to be in most of the movie, but just give a thumbs up. Uh, and Robbie's talking to Angela about how he saw a ball of light the night before. And then it like folded in on itself uh -huh. and then seemed to create some sort of tear like right in front of him, he said. And she's like, what? And then just then it just cuts to another scene. Yeah. Uh, and then Michelle is now helping record more nature sounds and stuff. Um and then he takes that microphone. It's one of the, you know, like I said, long microphone. And he puts it in this hole. It's like a burrowed foxhole or yeah. a or rabbit hole or something. Except like that. it's in a rock. <laughs> yeah, it's in rock. And then you hear like this weird interference or like almost like feedback, like a yeah. guitar feedback or radio feedback of some sort. And it's just like, you yeah. know, and then. Then he just leaves it in there and it's just like going for a long time. And then he's like, listen, to, listen to the rocks. And then he puts his ear up to the rocks. And yeah, he's like, you can almost feel the vibrations and the currents, you know, and then they're like listening to it. And it's like, yeah, and it's like, and then so finally he pulls the mic back out and then that noise stops. <laughs> uh, then they start talking about the sounds from the night before. And then Robbie goes, huh, it's weird. The camera battery hasn't gone down at all. Yeah. They also do find a very large, um, as the girl puts it, bullet. Bullet. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a large bullet. Yeah. Uh, it's a shell casing. Yeah. 50 cal shell casing. It's, I mean, it's good size. And it's like embedded into the desert floor, just like, yeah. like the axe from earlier was. Yeah. It's just kind of like, chunk, yeah, stuck down into it. Um, then, uh, Angela said, oh, I, uh, I had a, oh wait, no, uh, Michelle said that she had a dream about her mom. I don't know why I wrote Angela, but Michelle had the dream oh, yeah. about her mom. And then she goes, and then my mom's body was coming out of like this black storm. There was this black storm and my mom's body was coming out of it. And then her hands were coming out of it. And then a bunch of other hands and they were all trying to grab me. And that's yeah. all we get from that. Uh, <laughs> they do mention, though, that like um, the others had some weird dreams, too. They, they don't get into it, but yeah, they, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah that's right. They all had weird dreams. Yeah, yeah we, I had a weird dream, too. They're yeah. like, it's not a competition. <laughs> um, and then next, we're filming the music video. They're out on the dry lake bed. Yeah. Uh, filming the music video, and the wind is so bad 
as you, they're trying to talk or anything, the audio is completely undecipherable. It's yeah. meant to be that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's a- but it's just like... <laughs> yeah, I've, like- <laughs> I've seen movies that were filmed where they, they didn't intend to capture the wind, but yeah. you know, they sucked at filmmaking, and so they captured the wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is very much intentional, but it is yes. that that wind beating against the microphone and you can't understand anything that's going on. No. And, and they, you, just, you can kind of hear, they're like okay. shouting, they're like, I can't hear anything over the wind, you know? Yeah. So. And then the sun begins to set. And, um, we're getting these ominous sounds mm-hmm. and all that. Um, and even more like thuds and stuff like that, almost like drum like sounds. But, like, they're not really mentioning anything about it. They're not like, oh, did you hear that, you know, music? Yeah. Ominous music and all that. And I'm like, these, this is audio. Found footage. How is this on these memory cards? And nobody is. I, I think there might be something behind that. And, and, and it doesn't really become clear through the movie. But um, I actually did read clear through something. Clear the end. Huh? So, I say clear through the end. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We'll get into that. <laughs> but I, I did read something online where it was the, the creator of the film was talking about. I, I think they were talking about that point where uh, Robbie, or is it Robbie or, or Scott, who put the microphone down into the hole? It's Robbie. Yeah, <clears throat> and there was kind of a mention of like, oh, why didn't they like really react to those insane noises? Mm-hmm. It was like, well, who said they heard them? You know, so, it's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so yeah. there's, I feel like there's probably some sort of, sort of oh, so reason. You're saying it could be like an EVP type thing, like on those ghost shows where if they didn't listen to the playback, they would have never heard it. That's, it's possible. Something like that, because they're really not reacting. No, they're not. Other than to the, the thundering sounds. Yeah. In fact, I'd say that like the thundering sounds is the Thunder. only sound they really do react to. Yeah, because even like a bunch of like the animals, they never mention, you know, the the sound of like coyotes or they're capturing the audio of the night, but they never actually mention no, any no. of it. So, no. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, that one, you know, if you're if you're trying to capture the sounds of nature and you're like getting the yeah. sounds of nature, it's not going to be like, look, hey, guess what, guys? I got the sounds of nature. Yeah, that's um, true. That's true. Speaking of. We get a black screen again, says card three. Yeah. Um, and we're back out in the middle of the night recording nature sounds again. Uh, then we hear that thunder like sound again. They're inside the tent. Once again, Scott's like, I'm going to go look. <laughs> yeah. So we get that again. It's the only thing he says in the movie. So yeah, I'm going to go look. Out. I'm going I'm to go out. Uh, so he unzips it and then we get more of those like cannon like sounds. And then Ronnie's like, I'm going to I'm going to go out. And see what I can see with with my camera. Like I haven't done that the whole rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, so he goes out and he uh, turns off his flashlight. So like all you see is like the silhouette of the hills at this point. You get yeah. like kind of the glow of the the moon over the horizon, you know, and the kind of this. Yeah. Yeah. Glow. <laughs> and then you see the, the silhouette of the hills and uh, and then we get, see the silhouette of a man holding an axe down by his side, just up on the hillside. Yeah, up on the hillside where the axe was embedded. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, who is that? He's just by himself. He's like, hey, who is that? Yeah. Like he's talking to the guy. And then we hear... <laughs> the bangs are continuing. Uh, and then he looks away from the guy. Camera pans away from yeah. the guy with the silhouette. And then you hear footsteps running faster towards him and then the sound of a swinging weapon hitting Ronnie and yeah. then him spitting out blood. Yeah. And then you see it like pouring out. Yes. It is a very sickening like sound. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, then, a, like a splurk. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, the thunder sound happens again but this time we see a light looking like the sky is like tearing apart. It's like a rip. 
Yeah. In the and sky, it's that it's and... like the strobing thing too, except for yeah. it's the the tear. Yeah, if you've the seen the tear like from Doctor Who, the Matt, yeah, that's what Matt I thought Smith of too. era where it was like going <laughs> sideways. This is just it, but vertically. So this is the yeah. female version of it. Um, so it's just. <laughs> I, I I couldn't tell if that look was was towards what I said or you were gonna sneeze. Uh, it was just this cringe look. You're like, oh no, really? Um, uh, yeah. And so this light is like coming through it, and then it's like it looks like it's tearing apart, and then all of a sudden we hear this loud screech sound, and then the light flashes towards the camera really really fast, and then uh next the camera and the flashlight is looking into the girl's tent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's literally like you get the flashlight and it's looking in the girl's tent and they're like, what's going on? And Ronnie's like, Oh, my head's ringing. I don't think that's what he said. Oh, it's not. No, that's what I thought he said. My head's no. ringing. They ask. No, not ringing. I don't think so. Anyway, what'd you think it said? I am pretty sure it, cause especially the way he says it. Yeah. He said, he's like, my head is raining. Raining. Okay. So like bleeding, but I think so. Okay. But like the way he says it is like very like weird. Yeah. He's, he seems my head is raining. Yeah. Okay. And, and you get a shot too of his hand at this point and it's oh yeah. totally it's bloody blood all over it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can tell the guy with the ax has hit him in yeah. the back of the head with the ax. Um, so then he goes into his tent and he said the sky opened up and then he's like trying to wake Scott. Yeah. And Scott kind of, kind of is just laying there with no shirt. And then Robbie takes his bloodied finger and starts like tracing it on Scott's back. And then you hear like stabbing noises. <laughs> And then the camera's like moving all over the place and Michelle's running out of her tent screaming. Yeah. And next Ronnie's stumbling around in the dark and every once in a while we see like this blur because light is kind of shown from a yeah. flashlight. Otherwise, it's just like everything's just blurry or black. Yeah. Um, Michelle keeps screaming and then she's like, I want my mommy. I want my mommy. And then just everything goes quiet. Yeah. And then we hear her yell, no, and then we hear like this dragging sound and then crying and screaming again. And then Ronnie's like whimpering. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he, he, it's like he's almost like hiding. Yeah. At point we hear lots of rush. lots of like running footsteps, screaming. Yeah. But what I put as anything. as like squishy sounds. Yeah. <laughs> squishy. Yeah. It just it, there was one point where all I could use was to describe something was just meat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, both girls are screaming now. The explosions are starting again, like that thunder, whatever. Um, whoever is holding the camera at this point is like walking a bit. Uh, we see a few glimpses of the ground briefly as the flashlights hitting it sporadically. And then he starts yeah. crying. <laughs> and this is a this is a terrible flashlight too by the way oh yeah it's 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 so bad it casts this like really small like yeah. white dot far away yeah. as i put in here this is by far the smallest pin light of a flashlight i yeah. have ever seen it is though we are looking at a flashlight being shown through a drinking straw yeah, it really does <laughs> Um, and by the way, we get a shot of the flashlight later. I've had one of those. If you yeah. twist the top of it, the beam goes from expand. this to this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But still, there should be some ambient light spilling out somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It is not like we're in a vacuum of space at this point. This is not a, it's more like one of the, it's like a really, really bad horror video game where you're like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact is like, I don't want to spoil what's happening. You know, you could tell the filmmakers like, I don't want people to actually see what's going on. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. But we're just going to really play it up. Um, 
so then we hear the thunder explosions again, whatever. He starts running towards uh, Michelle's crying and then he stops and then they're like really screaming and then he's crying more. And then you hear this chop sound. Yeah. And then the screams just stop. Yeah. And he makes his way towards where it sounded like they were. And then in this small beam of the flashlight, we just see a bunch of blood all over the ground. Then uh, all of a sudden the flashlight can light up like a normal flashlight. Yeah. You can see a big area and it's like, Oh, okay. And then for a second, it looks like someone's stabbing down at something. Yeah. I couldn't, it was one of the guys I, I couldn't yeah. tell. And then the Scott flashlight or... goes super tiny again. Yeah. And it's like, what happened? Maybe he what? is twisting that little thing. On yeah. The he's end just there. sitting there. He's like, I don't want to see it. Yeah. I don't want to see it. <laughs> And then uh, he <laughs> runs towards wh- wh- whoever that guy was uh, stabbing. And then Angela f- starts freaking out. You can hear, Robbie, Robbie, what's happening? And she's like covered in blood. Yeah. And then we hear the thunder again. <laughs> and then she starts talking or breathing heavy, screaming, crying. But her voice seems like doubled. It's like yeah. almost like that auto tune thing. But like her voice is doubled when she's talking. But she's not making much sense. It's just in and it's just everything sounds like very robotic and doubled. Yeah. Uh, she does bit. scream at him, don't leave me. That's the that's the yeah. only the only words that I, I could actually make out of anything. Yeah, like. which I get the, the bangs are getting louder. He's backing away and she's like, Don't leave me, don't oh, leave yeah. me. <laughs> and I'm like, why is he leaving her? Um and then now he's looking out of a cave and it's daytime. Yeah, it's like this weird crack of a cave. Um, he kind of like climbs towards the light, and then he reaches back, and there's blood on the back of his head. Yeah, like, and you get a, a somewhat decent look at this injury on the back of his head, and I mean, it, it's it's not just like blood so tear. He's got he's, like a, a chunk. Open. Yeah. yeah, he's got like a chunk of head missing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost. Um, and then he looks out, and he sees like birds circling. In yeah. the desert. I'm like, oh, that's not good. Uh, we see Robbie's shadow. Um, the, uh, and it looks like he's trying to reach for something. Yeah. And it sounds like he's saying hello. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yep. He just and starts we, chuckling at it. <laughs> then we hear, then we hear like this bird screech. <laughs> like just like, you know, like the, like a eagle. Yeah. You know, like type of sound and then we see like these intestines dragged across the ground looking like snakes and then yeah. we hear the girl screaming no at the same time and then Robbie's shadow is like stumbling because we're not seeing him we're just seeing his shadow at this point stumbling and then the thunder starts again but it's bright daylight yeah uh, now the camera's held sideways uh, so now everything's sideways we're going to do the podcast now sideways. <laughs> uh, he reaches that area of blood again, and no one's there. Uh, then he uh, he follows the trail of blood and everything. And then uh, there's that intestine snake thing, and it's like starts screeching at him like it's a snake. Now, earlier, yeah. we, we did see a rattlesnake. Yeah. This is not it. No, this is definitely not it. <laughs> this is definitely intestines, and it's thing, screeching at him. Yeah, it's the thing that moves quickly, and it's it's kind of clear at this point that some of the sounds they were hearing that that earlier I was like, man, a lot of coyotes in the distance. Yeah, it was also some of these things, whatever they are, because they it sounds like a, a human screaming almost yeah, at points. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's that like really loud. Screeching, Eagle, screeching yeah. sound. Yeah, but uh, but this is the point where you see that that's where that sound is coming from from these tentacle yeah. intestines. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he then finds his tiny ass flashlight, like we spoke about before. You know, like yeah, yeah, dollar yeah. store flashlight. He pokes at it a few times, like tink, tink, tink. You know, it, it reminds me of like the apes at the beginning of. Uh, um, oh man, I blanked out on the film. Um, the one that had the apes and the big monolith comes up and they're like, Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, dang it. I completely forgot what the, it, it's, 
write down in the comments if you guys remember what film I'm trying to talk about, because I'll probably remember it by the end of the movie, but it's a famous film, too. Uh, anyway, he pokes at it, and then he picks it up. And then we hear that thunderclap sound again. Yeah. And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. And he, and he puts the flashlight back down. He keeps going, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, and then thunder. It, it, but it's not even just the, the thunder. There's a, It's almost like this weird moaning sound coming from the sky. At the same it's, time, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, you hear, like, the thunderous roll, but it's this almost, like, weird mm-hmm. guttural moaning. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it, weird. It's, it's almost like they took part of, uh, you remember the T-Rex sound from Jurassic Park? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Type sound at the same time as that thunder, but not quite as intense. It's somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, then we get like more sickening camera movements, and it's just like, oh, it's just like, oh, this is why people were throwing up in the theaters. Not <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Things. Yeah. Um, he gets back to his tent, and now it's dark. It's like super dark on the inside. And I was like, yeah. it was just bright ass daylight. Yeah. And now it's dark. It's like super dark inside of your tent. And then you just see like blood like everywhere, all over the walls. Pulled and, in the bottom of the yeah, tent. Yeah, pulled in the bottom. And then he's got, he's shining a small flashlight in there. And I'm like, where did this come from? He put the flashlight back down. Yeah. How does he have another one? Uh, so he has the flash. And then we see Michelle's, like the side of her head. Yeah. And like her ear and just some hair. And she's got like blood all over. And then he freaks out and then shuts the light off. And then you hear a rattlesnake rattling. Yeah. Well, and there are like little creatures crawling around. Like they almost kind of look like like maggots. Yeah. But not maybe not quite. Right. But just a, like thousands of little like wormy like creatures crawling around in the blood. I just I just remember it was just dark. Everything yeah, is just dark. It's very dark. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't I don't even remember seeing those things that i can remember. i just remember maybe maybe that's what was making the the blood all move all i remember is it was just super dark yeah <laughs> um he then takes off all of his clothes and says bye mom sorry sorry mom sorry. and he's yeah. listening to a voicemail from her or something yeah there's like a voicemail playing yeah but he doesn't have his phone there's no. just a voicemail playing yeah from his mom saying something about, I wish you, you know, you were here and your brother and blah, blah, blah. And all this. She's and crying. She, she's yeah. like, she's worried. She's been trying to get a hold of them. And yeah, she can't get a hold of them. And he's like, sorry, bye mom. Yeah. And then he just sets the camera down and walks off. And then he just sits his bare ass naked down on the, on the, on the desert floor. Yeah. And then he gets up and just walks back and he's like, I found it. And then he looks down and then those snake intestines slide between his feet and then screech again. Yeah. And then now it's dusk and he's crawling. And he's like, who am I? Who am I? The sky, by the way, is moaning again at this point. (laughs) And he has a tiny flashlight again. It's super dark, except for that little pin light. And over and over again, he's just saying, I'm Robbie. I'm Robbie. I'm Robbie. I'm Robbie. (laughs) And he's like walking in the brush and he hears a noise. And he's like, somebody help me. Help me. He's like, who am I? 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 And then you hear the thunder sounds again. And then the camera pans across the dim ridge line again. And then we see the silhouette of that man and the axe again. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm Robbie. I'm Robbie. I'm Robbie. And then we get this close up of Robbie's face and it's just light on Robbie's face up close. And he's got blood all over him. And then, then, uh, uh, where was I at? Oh yeah. And then we hear like hooting bird sounds in the distance. Like, yeah, that's what it was. And then, then, uh, it's dark again. And then he's in the brush and Robbie appears to be crawling again. 
and then there's bloody feet standing in front of him. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's, he's shining the, his little light on them. He yeah. just keeps the light on them. Yeah, and he's like, and you can see the axe hanging down. It's it's somebody like standing there. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's you the can bloody see bloody feet, dude, holding the axe. Yeah, but all you see is like his bloody legs and feet, and then like yeah. the the blade of the axe hanging there. Yeah. yeah, and Robbie's like, "Go away, go away." And then the camera looks somewhere else. And then the bloody feet come walking closer in that little flashlight beam. And then Robbie starts playing with a pool of blood on the ground. Yeah. And then starts building a little rock sculpture stack tower thing. There is something fleshy and yeah. goopy that he uses as the first rock. <laughs> or he like stacks the rocks on top of. Yeah. That's, that's I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it. I don't know what all is happening at yeah. this point. Uh, then it starts sounding like things are falling, like rocks are falling mm-hmm. from the hills and all this sort of stuff. And then we see Robbie's feet walking and they're bloodied. And then he reaches a cave like hole thing that he starts looking down in. And then we see this bloody carcass just kind of down in the bottom of this hole with his tiny flashlight. And then he looks up and he sees the moon. And then that strobing light again. And then either the light or the camera's moving. I can't tell at this point. Yeah. Something's somehow this ball of lights move. And it was almost like when he was looking in the lake earlier where the, the, he was had the sunlight and it was kind of playing around with the sunlight and the reflection. It was kind of like that. It was just kind yeah. of moving around. Um, and either uh, then we hear this echoey voice say, hello, hello, hello. Just and then he moves his bloody hands in front of the light. And yeah. it's just kind of shimmering in the light. And then the light comes striking bright down this weird tunnel and then we hear that feedback sound again. Yeah. So it's almost like he's looking out from inside of that mountain. Yeah. Or the hill and looking out into the bright, like just this bright light coming in towards him. Yeah. And then next thing we're swimming in blood. Yeah. Um, and you can hear a very loud, like heartbeat sound. Yeah. Boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And then they're like splashing around and then we see fingers and then we see, we hear an owl's like, hoo, 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 hoo. and then the rip tear light starts flashing and then it's daytime. Yeah. And then he's like throwing up blood on his bloody feet yeah. in the middle of the desert. And then he pulls some weird skin membrane thing off of his feet. Yeah, like, I wasn't sure at first. I thought he was like peeling off the top layer of his skin, but he's not. There's like because it's just skin underneath it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's pulling off something off of his feet. It's so weird. Yeah, it's like there's this membrane that's been on his body yeah. and he's like pulling it off and then he just drops it to the ground. And then we see like this bee in a pool of blood and it's like, and it's like trying to get out of it, but it's stuck. And then incidentally, I ended up reading that while they were filming this, they got attacked by a swarm of bees. Oh, nice. (laughs) And so that bee being in the film was just kind of like there. See, I I could see that to an extent, considering how a lot of that blood is made from corn syrup. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you take like corn syrup yeah. and and food coloring and stuff, and you're like, oh yeah, you're gonna attract some bees. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was um, uh, the the bee basically photobombed this movie. Oh, no, nice. That's what happened there. <laughs> uh, so then Robbie's like, he just you hear him say, "Can you see that?" And then you see the screeching snake intestine thing. Yeah. And then we get upside down camera shot of running and crying, and then he's sitting. And then we hear donkey sounds. Yeah. And then the five mule or the five donkeys again. Yeah. And he's then, like, he's walking toward him. He's like, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. And then he yeah. just sits again. 
Yeah. And then we get some dizzying shots of a yucca tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, uh, and then now we see him and the rest of his friends hiking to the camp off yeah. in the distance. Yeah, you can see with uh, with like Scott in front, the two ladies with their parasols. Yeah. And then you can see, it, well, Robbie. to be clear, yeah. this is very, very, it's a distance, right? So yeah, you can't yeah. actually tell, but it's clearly... It's clearly it, them. It's, it's clearly the them. same shot from yeah. earlier that we've seen, just from and, a different perspective. Now we're looking at a third person perspective. Yeah, and like the the person in back actually turns and looks toward him. Yeah, yeah. Right. And he, he's yelling, back, Scott, Scott, yeah. Michelle. Yeah, and then yeah. the Ronnie in that group stops and looks. Yeah, yeah. And so thinking back, he right now is absolutely drenched in blood. Yeah, and covered in red. When they first got to the desert, he stopped and filmed some sort of figure in red walking in the distance. Yeah. So this is, Which yeah. we thought was possibly a mirage. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We're like, whoa, what's happening? So, and then now he, we're looking at a dust devil. Yeah. And then there's a hole that's been in some like dried cracks. And he starts following the cracks somewhere. This is then, the lake bed, isn't it? Yeah, he's on the middle of the lake bed at this yeah. point. Then we get an upside down shot again. And we approach someone laying on the ground. Yeah. And I'm thinking it's Michelle. Not quite for sure. Yeah, I think so. Blondish uh, hair, but it, she's pretty soaked in blood. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of hard to tell. But And then the person gets up and starts running away. And we get yeah. a shot earlier where uh, where Ronnie's instructing her for the music video of walking down the center so he could film her. And it's oh, almost yeah. like that same sort of thing. But now she's running. It's almost mm-hmm. the same shot, but it's upside down and running. And uh, the camera is now running after this person and crying. And he's like, come back, come back, come back, yeah. come back. Uh, and then now she's laying on the ground again and it looks like Robbie collapses on her, but no, she just gets up and runs away again. Yeah. And the camera's still upside down, but we're in pursuit again and she's covered in blood and she keeps looking back and running away. Um, and then we just see like these three, like big sticks or posts coming out of the ground again still upside down but like these three post things out of the ground um oh did we see those i didn't note those here yeah i didn't note those until later yeah we see them come out of the ground and then okay. it kind of flashes away really really quick and then we oh. hear two voices almost like they're harmonizing singing together uh-huh. like when michelle and robbie were harmonizing and singing earlier we kind of get this little hum thing. Okay. Uh, and now it's night. Still upside down. Yeah. Uh, with At some point, is it him? I, I don't know. At some point during this whole shot, he, he keeps whispering over and over, did you see it? Yeah, that, that comes up it? at this point. Yeah. Okay, so okay. there's the flashlight and then he's like, do you see it? <laughs> Again, see it? this movie is so disjointed. It's hard to know exactly when yeah. all this stuff happened. Yeah. So this happens right. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Um, at this point when he's like, did you see it? Did you see it? Um, I I said to myself, oh, God, there's still 30 minutes of this left. How? <laughs> um, so we see his hands covered in blood again. And they're shining in the strobing light. The strobing light's happening, and he's just looking at his hands. I'm like, dude's been out in the desert. You think that that blood would have dried by now, but it hasn't, I guess. No. Um, and it's just the cinematography again at this point is just like so nauseating. Yeah. I was just like, oh man, I cannot follow any of this, and I yeah. can see why people are throwing up. Uh, then there's this blood trail on the ground. Um, and then we hear footsteps running towards him and we hear Michelle singing. Um, and then once again, that flashlight's just tiny, so we can't see anything. And then he arrives at a tent. I see. There's also, I don't know if you were seeing the flashlight there or this is, there's another point here. There's this weird red light in the distance. 
And we actually, I didn't mention it, but we actually did see it one other time before. A and weird it's not red light. Yeah. Yeah. There's this, there's just like little ball of, it, it looked like a, like a red light. Right. I couldn't tell, but it was very distant. And see, so, with me being colorblind. Yeah. I, I, I may know, not I, have even seen it. You yeah. Know, at that point. I, I that's I entirely know. possible. I I, I'm wondering if that's actually what you saw. Cause because th- this is actually the second time this happened where there's like a really small red light in the distance. Hmm. And it's not know. really. I don't yeah, know. but and again, don't, don't know, know what it is. <laughs> uh, he arrives at the tent. And he's just like, hello, hello, I'm coming. And he goes in and there's just blood everywhere. Um, Pooled up all over the place and everything. And then we hear the thunder sound again or cannons or whatever. Yeah. And we still hear Michelle singing. Uh, we see Scott's face. He's like laying in his bed and he's just blinking, staring upward. Yeah. He sits up and he's covered in blood. Yeah. And then Scott says, can you hear it? What's that? And he unzips the tent to look out like he's done every other time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michelle singing outside, uh, and it sounds like something's running around out there. Uh, yeah. Michelle starts giggling. Uh, Robbie puts his hand in the pool of blood on the, in the middle of the tent. It's like deep pool of blood. Yeah. Uh, he looks over in the tent, and Angela's sitting there next to him. And she's like, I don't want to be here anymore. And then Robbie starts mumbling. He's like the body of Christ, the body of yeah. Christ. Yeah, he's blood, he's blood, like in the middle of he's stars. doing yeah. some ritualistic prayer. Yeah, very Catholic yeah. type prayer. Um, Angela's like, do you hear something? And then we hear like crying from outside and then the thunder s- sounds again. And then someone starts calling out for Robbie, but it sounds like his mom. It doesn't sound like any of the people there. It sounds like his mom. Yeah. And she's crying. And he looks out of the tent, uh, and it's his mom. It is. But in her house, in the dark. Yeah. So now, outside of his tent is inside of her house, like in the living room area. Yeah. Um, But it's still super dark. Like, and all we get is the shine of his flashlight. You know, yeah. just so you just see, like when you're looking at people's faces, you just see like part of their face. Like it's like not even like it's just so hard to see. Yeah. Um. He's still praying, mumbling. Body of Christ, body of Christ. Uh, he finds her. She turns to look at him. She's covered in blood. And she's like, "Oh, Robbie, I'm so glad you made it home. I missed you." And then she turns back around, and he's like, "Mom, mom, I can't find Scott." He starts walking around the room, and then we hear a flight attendant. It's like passengers, but just right thirty nine. Yeah. Oh, we are beginning ready to blah blah blah. And then we see Scott looking back at Robbie through a mirror, plane but window. it's like blood red. Yeah, and it's like yeah, but it's like a plane window, yeah. but it's a mirror Yo, that's yeah, hanging yeah. on the wall. But yeah, it's a plane window, yeah. and. Then he's we're also this may sound irrelevant, but we're also hearing the sound of the storm. Yeah. From earlier. Right. So like that really bad thunderstorm that approached yeah. when they were at the house or whatever. Yeah. So it's so, yeah. The rain and the thun- Yeah. And the storm. Yeah. So now we're back. Yeah. Regular rainstorm and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And then we hear uh, he, uh, Robbie says like, I'm sorry. I love you. And Scott's just looking at him. And then we hear the, what sounds like an airplane flying over and then we get that strobing light again. Yeah. And then we get a silhouette of a woman standing in front of it. And then the flashing is coming more. And then the woman's kneeling down, chanting something on the ground and then flashing. And then we see feet walking towards light in the desert. And then it's like, do you see that? Do you see it? And then, then we look at the pool of blood on the dry ground and then a naked, bloody person walking away from the tiny light. And he's like, hello, yeah. hello. And they're holding the axe. And he's like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. 
And then now both are running like two naked people chasing each other. And then we're hearing the girls screaming again. And then the flashing lights. And then we see bloody hands and then donkey sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and then a bloody carcass of some sort. And what sounds to be like slow flapping wings is like. <sighs> and then we hear like it sounds like an alligator. And it's like. <laughs> and then and then it's like, is this carcass moving? And it's like, I don't know. And then yeah. we get this screeching moan, wail, coyote, dinosaur, monster growl thing. Crunt, crunching, grunting. Yeah. And then There's... like this raptor T-Rex thing. And then you're like, are those teeth or a spine? Yeah. Uh, that's why I couldn't like teeth, scales, um, uh, like yeah. spines. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort and of then, like horns or something coming out of it. It was it's... like meat with teeth. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, there's this other part where it's like this, this patch almost of hair. But yeah. it's but it's like really weird, like pinky, pink, purplish, weird. Some blo- it's it's very very bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then and then we get running upside down again. Mm-hmm. The camera's upside down for some reason, and then he's like back. He goes back inside the tent, yeah. and Angela's sitting in there waiting, and he's like, shh, and, shh, shh, be quiet. And, uh, I, I kind of want to just just back up a little bit. This this thing that we just described, this is it appears to be one organism. Yeah, right? it's like one creature it's, of some sort. Yeah, and, and like it has these almost like these tentacles. They almost look like worm segments that you would see on a worm. Yeah, right? but but it's all like, attached. Yeah, it's all one big thing, right? And you kind of get that, and then it's. It's just super weird, and he, yep. yeah, finally. And runs you can away barely from it. see it because we're only looking at it through that little pin yeah. flashlight. <laughs> yeah, that little pin hole flashlight. Yeah, so you can't see a damn thing, and yeah. it's just like, what is happening? There's so much of nothing, and yet a lot. Yeah, well, and and at, at some point, <laughs> like right before you see the creature, you hear somebody say, "It's all around us." Oh, really? I didn't yeah. catch that. Okay. Yeah. I think that's important, but I'll, we'll, we'll come to that okay. a little bit later. Too. So then uh, he he runs into the tent. Angel's sitting there, and he's like, shh, 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 be quiet, be quiet. And then he starts freaking out really loud. Yeah. And then you yeah. s- hear someone getting stabbed repeatedly. Like, clack, clack, clack. And then screaming sounds. And then hands start coming around Angela and, like, rubbing on her. And it looks kind of like sexually rubbing on her. And you're like, wait, what's going on? And then one of those screeching intestine snakes is like thrashing around in the tent. You're like, what is going on? What's happening? And they start wrapping around his ankles. Yeah. And then Angela is in the dark and you can kind of see her face and she starts smiling. And then she's saying something, but there's no sound. Yeah. And then next thing you know, she's got her hands and she's naked and she's rubbing her bloody boobs. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we can't see 90% of anything going on in this film. <laughs> but the cinematographer makes sure we can see Angela's bloody tits for like yeah. a long time. Yeah. That's the only thing you could figure out in this whole movie. Now, yeah. it may come from years of growing up. Where like the only porn that I ever saw was like that scrambled stuff that you could see on like cinema, like like late at night, and it was like I don't yeah. know, I think that's a boob. Maybe it was just from years of figuring that out, <coughs> but that's probably how I was able to be like, oh yeah, those are her boobs. Um, so then Robbie's feet then are like like appear like he's being carried over, or they're like they're floating over the desert floor, like yeah. they're just like gliding. Almost. Yeah, because you're getting like the camera is pointed like it's pointed down at the desert floor. Yeah, and, and it's the the floor is moving beneath him, but yeah, his feet are actually above the ground. Yeah, they're like they're shh, like they're yeah. gliding. Yeah, and uh, then we hear this guttural animal growling sound. Like I can't even make the sound. No. no. Uh, then he sees the axe, and he's like, "No." And then you hear, show them. Yes. <laughs> really loud. Yeah, seriously. Like a very deep voice. Show yeah. them. And I was like, yeah. what? And then water just starts rushing in like a flood from somewhere. Yeah. And then we hear screaming. And then we get like this upside down, 
over the waves of the ocean, but it's dark. And mm-hmm. then we see a bloody uh, Angela kind of in the distance and she goes under the water. <laughs> yeah. And now the camera's under the blood red water. And then we get like hands and then feet and then the flashing light tear and then that bright light tunnel thing again. And then this feedback noise. And then next, there's just like these streaking light particles, kind of like we're going like 2000 parsecs a second, you know, like in the Millennium Falcon. And then we're like flying through them. And then all of a sudden it just like stops. Yeah. And then and, stillness. And and they're not really stars. They're more like, no. like shards of something. Yeah, but it's, they're it's like really, light. It's like yeah. little light particles yeah. of some sort. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're not stars, but it, it's almost like you would think like if you were out in the stars. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, people who don't understand when you're a kid, you think that that's what it's going to be like if you're yeah. going through the stars, that stars are just floating all around you in space it's like no that star is like millions of miles away and then the next one's like millions of miles away yeah <clears throat> so yeah so it's like uh it's like it's like driving through a snowstorm okay and then you, you know you get these little you know at night and all that sort of stuff and then you see them like coming at you uh and then it stops and it just kind of it just kind of hovers and then we're flying through them again and then it then spiraling and And then we get this like almost like orchestral string ambient music Mm -hmm. going on at the same time. And then then we hear like dolphin like sonar noises. And then then we're screeching light tear. And then we just fall to the ground. And, And to be clear. You could have completely made up half of what you just said, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, I, I I would not have any idea if any of the things you just said actually happened or not. Yep. That's what this movie is like. Yeah, but it did. But it did. So, And then he starts throwing up vomit blood on his yeah. feet again he yeah it's like he fell onto the desert floor he yeah. falls he falls onto this sign that says warning restricted area yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah and it's, he's like he's like wiping it off and it's like warning restricted yeah. area keep out blah blah, blah. then we see like a gas mask yeah. sitting over to the side and you're like what yeah. is going on and then he sees this man he looks over and he sees this man cowering like down almost crouched down holding an ax and he's like hi i'm me <laughs> i'm me and then the guy swings the ax at him and it's him is it his naked self swinging the ax at him and then we see this pile of a bloody mess and now he's running away in the dark uh. <laughs> and then uh we see three posts in the ground in the middle of the dry lake bed. And we look up and there is a head on each of the posts. And one is Michelle, one is Scott, and one's Angela. And now it's becoming daylight. And we get these from many different angles. Yeah. It just shows them from every angle possible. And then it's like, oh, finally, we actually we can actually see something in this movie. Like, yeah. we know what we're looking at. Uh, then Robbie starts humming. And then singing the song that Michelle was doing the music video for. Yeah. And then he says, goodbye, Michelle. And then he finds a shark tooth. Yeah. Laying on the ground <laughs> in the in, middle in of the, the dried desert. up the dried up lake bed. Though. Yeah, so. big old shark tooth. And he grabs it and he goes to his belly and he starts like cutting his leg and his other leg and then his belly and then then he cuts his dick off. Tasty. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's funny because like he's cutting his leg and then he kind of gets this pan back shot where he's just like sawing at something. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's 
he's cutting his dick off. Yeah. And the next thing, the next shot is just on the floor. Flops on the ground. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, yep, there it is. And then he just kind of pokes at it a few times. Yeah. And then he starts cutting at it with the, with the tooth a little bit. Yeah. And then he cuts his belly open and pulls his intestines out and they're just hanging there. And then he walks until he collapses. And then he gets up and keeps walking. Yeah. And then a plane starts going overhead and he sets the camera down and he keeps walking. And as the plane's going overhead, he's looks like he's trying to flag it down. Yeah. And he's just naked with his intestines hanging out. Yeah, He's carrying them, by the way. He's, yeah, he's carrying like his intestines them. in front of them. Yeah. And yeah. then he's like trying to flag the plane down. And then the outwaters. Yep. The end. The end. Um, after the credits, then we just get still photos of the trip. Yeah. Uh, and then at the very, very end, we get the sound of a tape ending. Yeah. Click. Even though this is a card. But These yeah. are memory cards. <laughs> and we're getting the sound of tape ending. I mean, I guess you could argue this was a, these were all There's assembled. No there's no these arguing. Were, these were all assembled onto Still something. Still so. a memory card. They wouldn't yeah. take it and spend the time to put it on to actual film. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. It was memory cards, and they're saying each memory card, they would say... <coughs> or they just wouldn't have said memory card on each. I know, right? Yeah. So, um... All right, Chris. This is, um... This movie clearly delves into a pretty severe cosmic horror. Yes. Um, which is my jam. I've talked about it many times. Yes. Um, so I actually want to throw this back at you first. Okay. All right. Change change it up a bit. All right. I want to know what your thoughts, thoughts are on this film first. <clears throat> I emphatically, emphatically give this film seven dumpster fires out of five. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, I thought the story was a mess. I thought the cinematography was extremely bad. I thought that the lighting was horrible for the sheer fact of they didn't want to give away what was possibly going on. Yeah, They took it so far out of reality that I had a hard time. I was literally... Th okay, the first hour of this film, I'm going... Oh God, I want to turn this off so bad because nothing has happened. Yeah. Literally nothing happened in the full first hour of this movie at all. Um, then when things started to happen, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Not to the fact of like, I'm intrigued because I don't know what's going on. I'm like, it's such a convoluted mess. I yeah. don't know what's going on. Why is there so much time left in this film? <laughs> How can they continue to drag this out any longer? Yeah. And then I'm like, maybe there's a payoff at the end. And guess what? There wasn't. There's not. No. <laughs> so, like I said, this gets a solid seven dumpster fires out of five. <laughs> okay. Ding, 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 ding. Lots of dumpster fires. Yeah. All right. That's my thoughts on it. What about you? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, 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 cosmic Horror. <laughs> so over the past 48 hours, as I have struggled to figure out how to even talk about this movie. Yeah. It's placement on my list of movies we've watched this year has yeah. also bounced around like a half a dozen times. <laughs> okay. Up and down and up and down and up and down. Okay. Um, I like this movie. <laughs> <clears throat> That's where I land. Wow. At this at this moment. Okay. Um this this is cosmic horror, man. I mean, this, I get what they were trying to say ish. Do you though? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously there was this point where he's looking out there 
whatever this rift thing is, pulls him into it. He keeps getting regurgitated through it over and over and over. Yeah. He's actually killed everybody off. He's actually in this weird cycle of struggling to find himself through it and attacking himself through the whole time through this yeah. time thing. It's this rift that he's going to continue playing out for the rest of eternity. Yeah. I get that. But, but Until he's like, I'm going to go ahead and kill myself. But even if he did go ahead and kill himself, it doesn't mean he's out of the loop. Right. So he's and it's, it's, it's like horrible. But like, what is this? It's because there's almost like this sense of like death and birth. Like, like so mm-hmm. many of the scenes I feel like are, um, are like analogies of birth. Like he keeps yeah, being when he's born. in that blood and all that sort of stuff. And then the yeah. membrane that's pulled off him, he's being <coughs> reborn again. I, I yeah. mean, yeah. 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 I, so where this works for me is that, that sense of like, what the heck is going on? Right. And, and, and the cosmic horror sense of it is, um, there is no hope. He he is stuck here. You don't really know for sure what actually happened. It seems like he probably did all this, but what caused him to? Is there actually something out there? Some sort of entity? Are they just... Did he just lose it because they stumbled into some sort of military, like, secret government testing ground? Yeah, it's Area 51. Are, are they hallucinating? You know, is... This is kind of one of the things that I like about Cosmic Horror is this idea you don't end up really knowing what's actually going on. And the more you do know, the more you seek that knowledge, the crazier you become. Now, this is the kind of film that I I would not want there to be a lot of, you know? (laughs) And like, every now and then... I like seeing something like this. Mm-hmm. That's just like, I don't know what's going on. This is messed up in many, yeah. many ways. Um, I don't know, man. It's kind of one of those where like, I, I could never recommend this to anyone. Just like a, like a horror fan. Like, oh, you like horror movies? There's no way I would recommend this, this movie. Yeah. You're like, oh, you love horror. What about this shit storm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But if I was in in like uh, my group of like where we're talking about cosmic horror, mm-hmm. this would absolutely be a movie that 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 I would talk about, and I could probably have discussions with people about, you know. And see, I could see this film being a short film. I could yes. see it working as a short film. Yes, I but could. We too. get this. We get this hour of lead up of nothing. Mm-hmm. To me, could have been summed up within two three minutes. This yeah. whole, the whole first hour could have been summed up in about two to three minutes. Okay. I think you probably could have been like maybe 20 minutes. Maybe. You know, but and that's maybe. just, just to get the setup of them going out there. Yeah. I do think this movie was too long, but for what it was for this particular type of cosmic horror, it worked for me, but I'm also, I'm also sitting here acknowledging like, Sometimes there's just not enough given away. Yeah, because I've talked to before about how like there's this balance with Cosmic Core where you don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Yeah. You but don't need this, the origins like, of everything. No, However, no. give us something. Yeah, and like with this, like, man, so many jump cuts, so much of like you had mentioned earlier, where um because they don't want to give too much away, it's just so dark and there's so much like camera swinging around and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like there's actually much of a story here to be honest. No, neither do I. (laughs) And I think I could have, I could have dealt with the movie a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Had some of, some of the things that still could be grounded in reality were still grounded in reality. Yeah. Light works a certain way. Period. So if 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 you're going to deal with light, you're dealing with a desert, you're yeah. dealing with the way that it's actually going to look out there. <coughs> it's not a vacuum. It's not going to suck away any 
an all light except for this little pinpoint. Yeah. Give give us at least some of the reality of how things actually work in the real world rather than building your story around something that's just yeah I, I agree but i also think that um i'm not entirely convinced that they're actually always in in the desert <laughs> in all the scenes you see like, like basically this this thing they come across this like rock that they come across i Either they stumbled into some military testing ground and they're all tripped up, you know, yeah. on on drugs of yeah. some sort, or you know, some sort of hallucinogen, or this entire area is actually the creature, this cosmic entity. Uh, because I could see that, especially like you know, like what was not to be weird, but what was that hole that they put the microphone down? <laughs> You know, I mean, was that actually a hole in a rock face, or was it an orifice of a creature? So the thing is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Could explain why he sniffed it after. <laughs> All I know is, um, good grief! I I would not want to watch a lot of movies like this. Um, but every now and then, I'll take something like this just because it's just out there enough to be like. Okay, <laughs> so I did not hate this movie. I, I actually kind of like it. I <laughs> I want. Oh, there was. I struggled so hard to make it through this movie. I oh, I don't blame you. I don't so blame you. hard, especially I mean, that first hour. because, like, <laughs> I I texted you. I'm like, the first hour of this movie is like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, you know, what the heck am I watching? And then yeah. the second hour is like, what the heck did I just watch? Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't get that from no. it. <laughs> my my thing was is like okay, like I said, I get what they were trying to convey. Mm-hmm. I don't take that from the film whatsoever. Yeah. However, I think the execution of it for me just missed the mark mm-hmm. completely. Um the story itself, I think worked to mm-hmm. an extent. It just didn't work, yeah. if that makes any sort of sense. Oh, I, I, tot- I totally get where you're coming um, from. Yeah. So, I mean, that to me, yeah. And I'll still leave it with my review. Dumpster <laughs> fires. <laughs> yes. We have five yeah. dumpster fires out of seven. and No, they... seven out of five. <laughs> oh, that's right. Seven, seven dumpster fires out seven of five. Seven out of five. From you. And a, oh, I actually kind of liked it from me. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're the opposite end. Yeah. You're like, I'll take the fire extinguisher to your dumpster fires. I kind of like dumpster fires. I kind of <laughs> like dumpster fires. Well, let us know what you guys think of dumpster fires down in the comments below. Yeah. And while you're there, uh, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. You know, tell us what you guys think of this film. Uh, I mean, it got great reviews from people. I <sighs> See, that's the weird thing is that overall, this movie is getting terrible reviews really yeah yeah um but and see i keep uh, seeing people say great stuff about that so okay so it's more like the people who are maybe like rating it on a on a scale of 10 or something it's getting like threes and fours when you dig into actual reviews like written reviews you are getting a lot of people like this cosmic horror nightmare yeah, but and and they do love it. So so that's why I say I think this, this is a visual horror nightmare in many ways, and I don't disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I really think that this is a movie that would not in any way appeal to the vast majority of horror fans, but may appeal to the those who are more into cosmic horror barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Well, not quite that. <laughs> Yeah. I liked this movie more than Barbarian. Yeah. So, eat that, internet. <laughs> wow. And see, I would take Barbarian over this one. Really? <laughs> as much as I didn't like Barbarian. Yeah. But still, yeah. that first half of Barbarian, to me, trumps out this whole film. And I will say, yeah, at least you can say that the, the first act of Barbarian makes a really, really solid short film. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. 
But anyway, uh, some other films that may or may not be dumpster fires, let us know, are ones that are coming up on the screen right about now. Uh, These are some other films that are coming out into theaters or onto video streaming on demand uh, here in the next few weeks that you guys can check out. We may go over a few of these, may or may not. Let us know down in the comments below if there's any that you guys would like to see. Um, And uh, we'll keep this uh, conversation going over on... uh, Twitter. Uh, you guys can find us over there on at casters of horror. Uh, Shane and I are both active on there quite a bit. So, you know, let us know what you guys think on there. If you don't yeah. have a chance to comment below, uh, that way uh, we can keep this conversation going. What'd you guys think of the outwaters hashtag dumpster fire? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but um, like we like to do every week, uh, we do like to tell you a little bit of horror that happens in our real world. We call this segment, Real stories of horrors. Um, I did say horror. Horrors. Yes. Horrors. <laughs> uh, once again, Mr. Talkative this week himself has, uh, has a story for us. I do. And I'm just sitting back. Here. I'm just going to. I should have brought a stronger drink. Yeah. I just um, brought water. So this one is kind of long, so I'll, I'll try, to, That's what try she said. to try to shorten it as much as I can. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> but um it's a story um man uh by goes by the name of Ennis uh, says some years ago he worked retail uh, in a store that was part of a strip mall and uh and one Friday night he and a colleague Dan decided to pull an all-nighter to get caught up um from some previous work they'd done this several times in the in the past the store closes at nine mall closes at 10 and they would just basically work through the night and then um, until either they finished or, you know, the morning crew got there or whatever. Uh, the store has two customer entrances, one that you could access from uh, the parking lot from outside the mall, and then another one that was uh, that led to, like, the hallway of the, the main thoroughfare of the mall itself, right? And then there was a, like, a utility entrance with one of those buzzers on it whenever you would uh, open or close the door, you know, beep, 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 yeah. that sort of thing. Right. Um, they were friendly with the property manager, so the, the property manager didn't mind when they did this. It was kind of just reminded them, maybe, you know, don't go, don't leave the actual doors of the main doors of the mall itself. You'll set you'll set an alarm off if you put try to. Don't get too close to the, uh, the other storefronts with the windows, because you might set off an individual store's, um, you know, like, system. yeah, alarm system. <coughs> Excuse me. So... They're working through after a few hours. At some point after midnight, thanks to copious amounts of Mountain Dew, uh, Ennis really realized that he needed to take a piss. Now the store itself had no restrooms; uh, most, you know, in a mall don't. Mm. But the the entrance to their store in the mall was right across from the hallway that led to the, the mall's restrooms. So he um, left the back rooms, just decided to go on over there. And this hallway, he says. Uh, the lights are always on, even when nobody's there. They never get turned off, and it's basically just a uh, hallway with a couple of, of entries to the... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. A couple of entries to the restrooms, and at the end was an exit uh, from the mall and a trash compactor, so there's basically, like, a, it's a dead end, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so he goes over, does his business, he's at the sink, washing his hands... Out of the corner of his eye, he sees someone walk toward the stalls, right? Well, his buddy Dan's the only other one there. And uh, he's like, um, oh, man, jeez, I, I didn't even hear you come in. Dan doesn't say anything. And he looks over, and none of the stall doors are closed. So he walks over. There's nobody else in the bathroom with him, or in the restroom with him, right? Nice. Okay. So, yeah, super weird, but it's also, you know, it's after midnight. He's tired, whatever. Goes back to the sink, grabs a paper towel, and above the sink is a a one of those gigantic wall mirrors, right? Mm-hmm. As he looks up into the mirror, he sees a dark figure pass across the doorway out in the hallway. And it's moving toward the mall exit or compactor area. Right? So he goes out, looks down that hallway, nobody there. <clears throat> 
turns the lights off and uh, decides to just go back to the store. A little shaken now, but you know, whatever. He does kind of kick the uh, ladies' room door open. Dan? You know, I think maybe Dan might be messing with him. Uh, no. Nobody in there. The manager's office is locked. Nobody in there, right? He says, okay. Time to just get back to the store, right? And uh, so he starts off down the hallway to the store. And before he reaches the main thoroughfare of the mall, he hears what sounds like footsteps behind him. So he turns while still walking forward. The sound stops and there's nobody behind him. Okay. Sorry, my phone's going off. Mildly more freaked out at this point. Uh, turns, starts walking forward again, or keeps walking forward, and at this point very distinctly hears the sound of loud footsteps running toward him on this tiled floor. Oh, man. And getting to the point where they are, like, right up behind him. Scrambles forward, obviously looking behind, still no one there. Um, he runs back to their storefront, quickly gets into the store, locks the or shuts and locks the sliding uh, door behind him, and practically runs through the store to the back room where you know his colleague is. <clears throat> when he gets there, um, he basically just finds Dan, coat on. Um, all packed up, computers shut down, and uh, says, not to be cliche, but Dan looks like all the blood has drained from his face. And the moment he sees Ennis, he says, let's leave. I'm leaving. You're my ride. We're leaving. So without another word, they both rush, shut off the lights, set the alarms, and book it out <laughs> into the parking lot. <clears throat> so on the car ride to take Dan home, Dan says that um, while he was uh, alone, you know, in the store, he heard some banging on the uh, the glass at the front of the store. Hmm. Really, really loud banging. And uh, thinking maybe Ennis had just like somehow locked himself out of the store, he goes up, and um, it, the banging is so loud. <clears throat> when he reaches the front, he can even see the the reflected light like bouncing. Mm -hmm. on the glass, right? He's about to joke that um, you can just go ahead and bust your way through. There's nobody up there. And while he's there, he hears the beeping of the the, uh, uh, the delivery door open. So he's thinking, and this has gone back, uh, going out to the car or something, so he goes back there, opens up, there's nobody in the parking lot. And when he shuts the door, as he's walking away, the door beeps again. And he turns and stands and looks at it, and the door beeps several times, even though it's closed tightly. And that's the point that he decided to pack up, shut down the computers, and right about then is when Ennis came into the back room. <laughs> he says, I took one look at your face, knew something had happened to you, and that was it. <laughs> and so they uh, booked it out of there. They have no idea what happened, but they do know that they never worked an overnight shift again after that. I don't blame them. And the one last thing I can say about that is that Ennis is just my name spelled backward because this is something that happened to me. To you? Yes. <laughs> what? Years, years ago when I worked retail at a bookstore. Wow. This was, um... I am the Ennis in that story who heard the footsteps behind me. Wow. So. <laughs> Man. That is my... That is your... story of horror. Jeez. <laughs> so. Jeez. I didn't know this was a true story of you. It's Man. a true story of me. It's a true story of Ennis. That's right. <laughs> wow. Well, if you guys got a uh, real-life horror story, make sure you guys send it in. Uh, you can reach us at castersofhorror at gmail.com uh, or uh, DM it to us on Twitter. Like I said earlier, uh, sure. what, uh, Casters of Horror over there on any form of social media. Or you can write it down below, down in the comments. And while you're there, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Uh, like we like to do every week, we're going to close this show out with a little bit of pick or pass. Something that we've checked out in the last week or two. 
uh, that's caught our attention horror wise, dude, I'm still kind of reeling from that story. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, holy crap. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and start on this one. I, this week I checked out a, a little documentary uh, film that was called Wrinkles the Clown. Uh, it's a <laughs> it's about a, a real life clown that's in uh, Florida that parents can actually call and have this clown come and terrorize their kids if they're being bad. Uh, this is uh, grown into such a cult following um, that it's become one of those one of those urban legend type myths. Uh, however, uh, it is a true thing. This guy does go around. Uh, there are viral videos of his actions on YouTube uh, and everywhere like that. Uh, there are uh, stickers and everything placed all over different parts of Florida where. Um, uh, oh, geez, that was so weird. I just looked up at my phone because it was uh, going off and it says Ennis on it. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I, but, and it's not you calling me either. I, but yeah, um, uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, there's these stickers that people, and it's got the phone number and everything that you can call and it'll go to the voicemail of, uh, Wrinkles the Clown and you can hear his voice and he will contact you back if the, uh, if the pay is right. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, wow, yeah, it's a, traumatize your kid for life. Yeah, exactly. But uh, if you guys can find the documentary, it's worth checking out. Uh, it does take an interesting twist about halfway through the documentary, which uh, I really? did not see coming. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, check it out. Wrinkles the clown. Uh, you guys huh. can uh, find it. I believe it's on um, Amazon. Or somewhere like that, you can look it up on there uh, as a rental on there. So okay, cool. I don't know where else you can find it. So anyway, what you got <clears throat> uh, this week? I did find another short film. It's called Ignore It. Ignore it. Yes, the um, film was called Ignore It, or you should yeah, ignore it. Yeah, this is my pick, so don't okay. ignore it. Okay. Um, but the film is called Ignore It. Okay. Um, it starts out basically this dad walks into his, his son's room. It's dinner time. Yeah. Um, he's like, uh, <coughs> excuse me. He's like, I'm sorry. The, uh, that woman is back. You know what to do. Ignore it. Don't look at it. Don't acknowledge it. Don't talk to it. Just, uh, pretend like it's not there. And I promise it'll go away. Kid is absolutely terrified at this. Um, but dad's like, come on down to dinner. You know, we have to, we have to do this. We gotta, we gotta deal with it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, kid goes down to dinner and the family just tries to have a normal dinner while something creeps out of the shadows and, um, something that I would think would be quite difficult to ignore, but whether or not the family does ignore it, you'll have to watch for yourself. Now, this one is probably one I think we should probably try to link to because it's actually quite difficult to just spot exactly this one. There are a few different ones called something like this. So, all right. I'll provide a link to it in the description. That'll work. Yeah. That'll it's work. a good one, though. I really liked it. Ignore it. It's not very long. It's only, I don't know, 10 minutes long or something like that. I don't know. So, ignore this film. Ignore it. So, yeah. cool. Yep. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, we'll put the link down below so you guys can check that out. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Shane, what film are we going to be reviewing next? I'm excited. And next week, Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear. That's right. Yeah. We're going to venture out and... Uh, and uh, and wrestle the bear. So right. anyway, uh, yeah. So get coked up and join us for next week. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, and by that, we mean Diet Coke. Uh, in right. fact, I'm going to go have some now, I think. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So that's it for this week. Make sure you guys hit like and subscribe before we take off out of here. Uh, yeah. Until next week, folks. I'm Chris Mess. I'm Shane. Get the hell out of here. We'll see, see you guys.
Ha, 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 ha,